Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, as I said in yesterday's video, from now on I'm going to be recording one theoretical video and one training game per day. I'm going to try to record the training game in the variation which I have analyzed that day. Uh, unfortunately, today was the first day of the new uh, recording schedule and I didn't find anybody to play the anti-Grunfeld against me or uh, with me. Uh, but for tomorrow's uh, game, I have arranged uh, a patron to play uh, the Moscow variation against me. The day after that, I'm playing the Neo. Uh, I'm recording the Neo Grunfeld, and I still haven't found anybody to play. Nobody's applied. So if you would like to apply for a training game in the Neo Grunfeld for tomorrow, uh, please visit the link in the description below uh, and uh, comment or message me on Patreon. So today I'm just going to play a regular training game. I thought about playing Stockfish in the variations which I'm recording and I might as well do that uh, in the future. But today I would like a serious training game in which I have a chance to win. Uh, and as you know, I have a goal of reaching 2100 on Leeches Classical by October 1st. So I need to be playing graded training games. So, okay, uh, it's going to be a 15 plus 15 classical game. Uh, let's hope for a good game and for a high rated opponent. Unfortunately, I'm playing somebody 1700, but uh, it's still a game. I'm not going to abort and let's see what happens. I'm going for e4. Uh, and let's see, perhaps I should have tried uh, d4 and there was, I'm not sure how to calculate that chance, but there was probably about 5% or 10% of entering uh, the anti Grunfeld. Now we have e4, e5, knight f3, and I'm expecting knight c6. Okay, we have the Philidor. I don't think I've ever played a training game against the Philidor. Well, maybe I have. I'm just going to play sensibly. Uh, let's see. He probably will not take. That's not the best move, yeah. Now, what do I want to do against this? Uh, I've been playing lines with uh, with bishop c4 recently. I'm not sure if I want to do that here. Hmm. I don't know what setup I want to play. I've also been trying out knight c3 here. There are a lot of moves white could play here. Taking is one of them as well. Uh, going for the... Well, for the queen exchange. So if d takes e5, pawn takes e5, I take the queen. Uh, if knight takes e5, I take the knight and exchange the queens. So perhaps I, I'm, I'm going to go for that. Uh, Let's see what he does. Bishop g4 should be played here. I think bishop g4 should be played here. Although I don't think this is a good way for black to play. Yeah. And now what do I want to do? Do I want to just win a pawn? That might be dangerous. Yeah, I have to admit, I don't know the the theory here that well. What happens if I just win a pawn? Does he take on f3? Does he play queen f6? Then I'm in a second pawn. I'm, I'm not sure what the theoretical move is here. Uh, I'm trying to remember the Morphe game 
where he had his queen on b3, there was a double attack on on f7 and b7. And this was in this variation with bishop g4 and the Philidor. I'm trying to remember that game, but I... I can't remember. Obviously white has either played c4 or c3 to achieve that. If you just win a pawn, he's going to get some pressure, but I'm going to test that theory. Let's see what happens. Maybe, well, bishop takes, followed by queen e7, pressure on e4, knight c3, bishop b4 is possible. I don't know. What happens if he takes on f3? Queen f3, knight e4 is a possibility. Okay, bishop takes. So I think I just want to play bishop e2 and knight c3, defend my pawn and castle. Bishop e2, knight f6, uh, knight c3, bishop b4, queen takes queen. I could then play bishop d3. So I'm just going to develop my bishop, prepare to castle. I don't know if this is a theoretical variation or not, but... I don't think black has that much for, for the pawn. Bishop b4 is the only way to try and win the pawn back. Okay, he castles. Uh, rook e1 is... Rook e8 is coming, that's pretty obvious, but I always have bishop g5. And I could give up my, my dark squared bishop, which is undeveloped. I'm not sure. Please let me know if you know this variation, if this pawn sacrifice is common or good for black, because I doubt it. Okay, so he is challenging my pawn with bishop b4. I could exchange the queens and play bishop d3, in which case I really don't mind him taking on f3. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do that, just play the position a pawn up. I don't really see a problem with that. Bishop d3, bishop c3, pawn takes, pawn takes. I, I have two sets of doubled pawns, but I have a potential passed pawn on the e-file. How does he increase the pressure? Uh, bishop c3, bc3, bishop f3, gf3. He has knight e5, attacking f3, attacking the bishop on d3, but then I can just play bishop e2, defend f3, remove my bishop from the attack. Uh, I could also play bishop g5, and just trade that way. So bishop g5, bishop g5, bishop c3, bc3, rook e8. I don't know, bishop d3 and bishop g5 seem to be the only two moves that save my extra pawn. Bishop g5, bishop f3, bishop f3, knight d4, uh, bishop f6, gf6, or bishop f6, knight f3, gf3, gf6. Then he could play bishop c3. I'm going to play bishop g5, because I don't see a problem with that move. Yeah, 
I don't know, I mean, whichever way he tries to liquidate here and win his pawn back, he's going to have to give up his bishop pair, in which case taking on f6 will not be uh, bad for me, because he's not going to have the bishop pair. And I can still meet rook e8 with something like bishop d3. I obviously do need to get my rooks into the center. So if bishop d3... Yeah, bishop d3 is risky because bishop f3, knight e5. Okay, takes here. I have to recapture. So if he takes here, I'm going to take the rook, he can then take here, and I have to play something like bishop d3. Or I can just take on c7, save my bishop, allow him to take on e2 with check. Okay, takes on f3. Do I take with the, with the bishop or with the pawn? I don't know. I kind of want to take with the pawn because if bishop takes knight e5 is a threat so pawn takes what does he do there knight e5 is not a move if bishop takes knight e5 and Pawn takes, he doesn't have rook d2, he has rook d6. But then I could try, okay, pawn takes. I want to play pawn takes to meet knight e5 with f4 and to meet rook d6. Well, I do have the bishop pair here, so I should try to play accordingly. So pawn takes rook d6, bishop e3. I don't take, have to take on f6, I mean, I'm just going to take with the pawn, although once I play bishop e3, he could then try moving the knight and giving me a check here. Am I afraid of that check? Or with the bishop pair, I think... Opening up the g-file should favor me. Uh, if I take with the pawn, rook d6, he could try knight h5, knight f4, but as long as I have a bishop to protect that square, should be fine. I'm just going to take with the pawn. Because now if knight e5 happens, my, my pawn is just defended. Yeah, okay, rook e6. Uh, where does he move the knight? Do I have to move my bishop? I don't think so. I can just try exchanging the rooks off. Because if he plays rook d8, uh, his rook is pinned once again. And if he moves his c6 knight, e5 is a threat. So just rook a to d1 should be a good move. Just trying to, trying to challenge the rook. Uh, he could play rook e6, but then I will just take on f6 and play rook to d7, double my rooks, and put my rook on the 7th rank. So I have the two bishops and an extra pawn. Uh, my pawns are doubled, but on the queen side, he doesn't have a way to break through. Even though my pawns are doubled here, I can stop his pawns. And even though I have doubled pawns on the F file, I'm able to create a passed pawn on the E file. So it's not that I have a useless extra pawn. I actually have a, a good extra pawn, which can be meaningful. Let's say the queen side is locked down. I have the extra pawn on the F file, which is helping me to create a passed pawn on the E file. So I think, I think my advantage should be big. Uh, Perhaps winning if I can trade off the rooks. My bishops are obviously much better on this board. 
I have tons of squares I can use, like e3, f4, e2, c4, uh, b5, uh, d5 if he is uncareful. So, yeah. Okay. So, what's wrong with bishop b5 here? So I'm looking at bishop b5 with the threat of bishop e7. If I can get him bishop e7, that's good. But bishop b5, he could try to play knight e5, in which case I have to play king g2, and he plays c6, chasing my bishop away. But then after c6, rook takes rook, knight takes rook, bishop e7. No, that doesn't work. As you said uh, in the comments in the last video, I'm going to try to use the arrows, I'm sorry about that. So I'm looking at bishop b5 to undermine the defender of the e7 square. Obviously, if the c6 knight isn't here, uh, bishop e7 wins the f8 rook. So I'm looking at bishop b5 and then knight e5, attacking my f3 pawn, king g2 c6 and then if i take the rook knight takes rook bishop e7 he he has no he cannot defend he can just move the knight and lose the exchange so i don't think that works so the next thing i'm looking at is just uh rook takes rook So if rook takes rook, knight takes rook, I still don't have the e7 square. I could try playing e5 here. e5, if the rook moves... I'm going to take it. If he exchanges, I'm going to take rook d1, and my threat is bishop e7. But what's the purpose of my pawn on e5? I don't think I can play pawn to e6. Yeah, I'm just I'm just going to exchange the rooks. I don't really need to go for any complications. His knight isn't such a good piece. It doesn't have any useful squares. Uh, and he should probably take with the knight. All the squares are taken because of my dominant bishop on e2. So I I don't think this was a bad decision. Maybe I had something with bishop b5 or with e5. But why complicate and waste time? My bishops are obviously really powerful. And... Yeah, I could also now try something like bishop f4, trying to isolate his pawn, but I'm not sure I want to do that. Uh, bishop f4 also stops knight e5. Uh, he could try knight a5 to enter the, the c4 square. I'm thinking that bishop f4 is a good move, getting my bishop to a better diagonal and threatening to take here if rook d8, rook d1, exchanging everything off. If he moves the knight, I'm going to take and take on c7. If he plays knight a5, then I can just take here. So bishop f4. Uh, I seem to be losing my internet connection, so I'm just going to connect to my phone. Wait, my internet seems to be troublesome today. I hope I'm not going to... I hope my time didn't run out already or something. Come on, why am I, why am I not connected? What's going on? Oh... Ok, 
Okay, come on, connect, connect, connect. Okay, I'm back online. Whose turn is it? So I'm, I'm guessing he doesn't move after bishop f4. I only have six minutes. I hope I'm back online. I've connected to my phone now. Okay, rook e8. Okay, we have a game. So I'm looking at rook d1 just to put pressure on his knight and going to an endgame where I'm going to be able to liquidate uh, easily. I don't think he has any tricks with knight anywhere. Knight takes because this is check. So yeah, just isolating his, his d pawn should be fine. Marching my king up the board and trying to win the endgame. Luckily I have a 15 second increment because this, this connection cost me some time. And I'm playing too slow. I mean, what does he do? Uh, he cannot avoid the trade. And if he doesn't do anything, I'm not going to take. I'm going to play c4 and try to play c5. Although c4, uh, b6. No, I'm, I'm an idiot. I can just play... Yeah, I could just have played e5, which is... <laughs> even better but yeah so now I'm trying to figure out if I should take give up my bishop pair well for now perhaps I should just improve my king If c4, he is going to play b6. c4, b6. If I take on d6, pawn takes d6. Do I really need my dark squared bishop here? I'm not sure. I think I want my king on these dark squares. Although his knight is then going to be able to come into into e5 but i always have f4 and my bishop is defending everything so i'm just going to take because i always have this move f4 and his knight still doesn't have scope so i should play f4 immediately although f4 he does have g5 so should i play h4 first uh, if he plays knight e5 now i'm going to play f4 and he could then go to g6, but if I've already played h4, then I lose the h4 pawn. So, maybe bishop c4. No, that's just a stupid check. Okay, so king g2, knight e5, f4. His knight only has the g6 square. King g3. And I want to follow that up with h4, h5. So I like that plan. His knight doesn't have any other useful square. Taken, taken. e5 is the only critical square. If I could get an f4, e5, that would be great. So I'm just going to play king g2. And I want to get my king up the board. I want to reinforce uh, my pawns, get my king into the dark squares, ideally. Uh, into f4. So what if I just play f4 now? f4, his knight doesn't have e5. If rook e8 now i can play f3 and if he then plays d5 i can still yeah f3 if d5 i can take with the rook my bishop is not hanging because i don't have to take with the pawn 
So I was looking at g5 and I was sort of worried about that, but I think I can just meet that with king g3. And then if knight e5, I could probably play king back to g3 and then f4. I only have four minutes, so I'm going to speed up whatever happens. Okay, uh, he reroutes the knight. Uh, don't I just have this move now? So e5, fe5, fe5. If he plays d5, I'm going to play f4. His knight is then blockading on f5, but... Uh, do we want to play bishop c4 first? Well, his rook is pinned, so bishop c4, king somewhere, followed by e5 makes sense. Uh, bishop c4 first, he is trying to attack my c3 pawn. So if I play e5, he can play a rook to c8, then my c4 bishop is on pre, so that wouldn't be good. Uh, but if he plays rook c8 now, I can just take... On, on, on d6 so I like this plan uh, I don't think he has such a good option here but to push his pawns yeah and now f4 allows for knight uh, f5 rook c8 is attacking c3 but I can play rook d3 so I'm thinking just bishop g4 first to stop uh, to stop knight f5 yeah I'm going to play that if knight g6 uh, rook e1 king g3 f4 or just push my pawn to e6 I don't want the knight coming into f5 Okay, uh, just f4. Now rook c8, rook c1, b4. Am I afraid of b4? If I take, he's going to take on c2 with check. Yeah, this was perhaps a mistake. I should have considered this some more. Uh, now rook c3. And I always have the option of bishop d1. If he moves his knight, I'm going to win the pawn. If he moves his rook, I'm going to win the pawn with bishop e, the, uh, e6 check. So... It should be winning here. I have a passed pawn, but it's not easy. Okay, saves that. Uh h4 to stop g5 h4 to give my bishop dh3 square h4 h4 h5 bishop h3 uh, h5 now Bishop h3. Is h4 useful? I don't think so. I'm going to play a3 to make sure rook c8 doesn't come with the threat of b4. And to stop his knight from ever entering b4. I need to march my king to f3. Uh, get my king into the position. Now I've stopped b4 I think. I'm extremely low on time. I usually think more and play worse when I'm better. That's strange, but true. Okay, plays h5. I think I have to play bishop h3 uh, to meet g5 with f5. And I'm happy to see this because my king now has uh, a way into the position. 
okay uh, that shouldn't be a problem uh, so I'm just going to march my king up the board now I've also stopped rook takes c2 being check okay uh, what happens after bishop e6 bishop e6 how does he save the pawn he doesn't i don't think he does bishop e6 bishop e6 what does he do if b4 i'm going to take twice no then he's going to take with the knight uh bishop e6 he has to go back or play b4 uh, Do I have a better move? Because b4 is dangerous. b4, c takes, a takes, a takes, knight takes, attacking my rook, attacking my c2 pawn. I would then have to go back and then rook c8. So bishop e6 might not be the most precise move, although now that the knight has vacated this square, bishop g2 might be good. Just attacking the pawn. And then I probably should only take once with the A-pawn. And then if he pushes his pawn, it's dangerous. So, okay, play fast. I'm, I'm sorry about this. I'm playing slow like an idiot. I need to play fast. I only have two and a half minutes. The knight goes back. Okay, uh, now let's keep playing fast. I need to put my bishop back. If he goes back, I don't know what to do. Probably bishop e6 now, because it does guard from f5, and it also attacks the pawn. So b4 should be his only option. Perhaps I should have played bishop e6 the first time. Uh, he defends, get my king into the position. I want to get into g5. He should probably play king h6 now. And then my plan was to just move my bishop away and push my pawn. So something like bishop h3 and follow it up with e6. Although if I keep my bishop there, uh, he's sort of stuck. Both of his pieces are stuck to the defense. I could try a pawn sacrifice with a4. B takes a4 and then c4. Uh, where I would get... Uh, two passed pawns so that's actually interesting a4 b a4 so i'm looking at this a4 b takes c4 he cannot take because his rook is pinned uh he could advance his pawn to a3 where i can just take it and then if he takes on c4 i can just take on a5 or on c4 with the bishop do i like that position i think i do so a4 b takes c4 uh, a3 I have to take, I think, rook a3. Uh, d takes c4, rook takes a5, or bishop takes c4. I like rook a5, because then uh, both our pawns are on the c-file. He then has rook d2, but I have uh, bishop c4. I like my passed pawn... And I like the fact that he cannot move anything comfortably. King h6 should be played. If I manage to play king g5, uh, he should just be uh, lost because my king is too dangerous and too far advanced. I still think b4 is his best try if his knight is on c6. Yeah, okay, he does play that. Uh, is there any way to increase the pressure here? So a4, b a4, c4, a3 rook a3 uh, d takes c4 rook takes a5 rook d2 threatening my pawn uh, can i just allow that uh, i think it's too early for that uh, i think i'm just going to lock down uh, the the king side try to play h4 i don't like this plan i think my king is needed here or here 
If I could stop my, uh, if I could stop his a pawn with my king, play h4 and then play king f2, king e1, king d1, king c2, and king b2, which is a lot of moves, but I don't know what he does, then a4, b a4, c4 is just winning. So if I don't see something he can do to stop that plan, I'm just going to play it. So now I'm looking at g5, f5, and he cannot play knight g6. My pawn seems to be marching up the board, and I'm threatening f6, winning the, the d5 pawn, so I don't think he has a good option here. This has turned out to be a much more complicated game than I thought at first, uh, but my extra pawn, as I said, became a passed pawn on the e-file, and that's why I went for the ending, uh, so sort of paid off my strategy. I want to get my king in there into either into b2 or into d4, because if I do manage to get my king into d4, then king c4, c5 is just too dangerous. So my next move, if he doesn't play g5, is going to be h4. And I don't think he can move anything. Uh, he cannot move his rook, he cannot move his knight. He can only move his king. If he plays b4, I win a pawn. If he plays d4, I win a pawn. So I think he's sort of in Zugzwang after h4, which is funny with knight rook, five pawns and the king to be in Zugzwang, but I, I don't think he has a good option. Uh, knight f5 check. I'm going to take that. Okay, that's weird. Uh, so bishop d5, knight f5 check. Uh, do I even want to do that? I'm not sure. I think I'm just going to play h4 first, although the knight, h, knight f5 check is more dangerous. So h4, and what if I continue with my plan of just doing nothing? No, that won't work. So maybe I should just win the pawn. So bishop d5, knight f5 check. Uh, king h3, knight moves back. King defends. I should get my king into e e3 which defends everything. Bishop d5, knight f5 check, king f3, knight h4 check, king e3, knight f5 check, uh, king e2, knight moves, and there's no way to defend, is that correct? Knight f5 is annoying. Now he wants to play g5. Yeah, okay, let's just go for this. Uh, I'm going to allow knight f5 check. I'm wasting too much time and opening up the d file should be very good for me. Knight f5, I think I'm going to go to f2. And then king f2, and then no, or king. Knight f5, king f2, knight h4 attacking the pawn. Oh, he plays h4. That's interesting. Uh, well, thank you. I think I can now just play king uh, g4. King g4. King g4, knight f5, bishop e4. Okay, play fast, play fast. I don't want to take the pawn, allow rook takes f4.
knight f5, bishop e4. And I have the open d file for my rook. I'm going to remove his knight from f5. And my next move is going to be rook d6, putting pressure on the on the pawn with my e4 bishop and with my rook. So I, I don't think he should have done this. I think knight f5 was way trickier because in many lines I could have lost my f4 pawn. I mean, what does he do here? Uh, if not knight f5, what does he do? Although knight f5 isn't a good move. So I think he's just lost here. My e, e5 pawn is too dangerous. The d file is too dangerous. He cannot play rook. Uh, the d file is too dangerous, I'm sorry. Uh, he cannot play rook d8 uh, because bishop e4. Uh, if he moves the rook, I can also then take on h4, probably. But I'm going to play bishop e4 first, just to stop knight f5 from being dangerous. I am low on time, only have a minute, but it's not tricky to play this position. And I have a 15 second increment. I'm pretty sure I could win it without any increment, but I'm not too fast, so this might be too optimistic. I mean, suggest a move for black. I'm I'm not sure what to suggest. Okay, uh, just bishop e4, stopping knight f5. My rook is defended by the pawn as well. Uh, if he moves the rook, my next move is uh, rook. Rook d6, probably, even if he plays rook c8, because my c2 pawn is defended, but then my a2 pawn is dropping, so I don't want to do that. If he moves the rook, I'm probably just going to take on h4. Yeah, okay. Uh, now... Okay, rook d6, rook c8, rook e6, attacking the knight, attacking the, the g6 pawn should work. If he plays rook c8, just rook here. If he defends, just rook here. I could also try rook b8, because my c2 pawn is defended, and I'm not too afraid of this. If my pawn was on h3, that would be dangerous. Rook takes c3, rook g3, checkmate. But... As things, things stand now, I have a pawn on, on h2, so everything is defended. Uh, then if he moves his rook, I could also try something like f5, attacking the pawn for the third time, but I don't like that because then rook c4 would be annoying. So yeah, if rook c8, I'm just going to play rook e6 and win the g-pawn take on h4 with my king and try to checkmate or queen my pawn because once the knight moves my my e pawn is moving up the board and i'm going to have a discovered check after rook e6 knight moves uh check the only square for the king is h7 and then i win his rook or his knight so yeah, this is lost. Uh, he should play uh, knight f5. I think that should be the only move. And the problem is that if he moves his rook, knight f5 doesn't work because bishop takes f5. He cannot take with the pawn. The pawn is pinned. So he loses a piece. Now he is catching up on time, but his position is lost. <clears throat> yep, 
Yeah, this is a great example of how a bishop dominates the knight. I mean, look at this. This is just wonderful. Uh, rook e6 now. He has king f7. Hmm. Okay, should I just win some pawns then? Okay, under a minute. Concentrate. Oof, I don't want my time to run out. Uh, if king f7, I can just take on g6 with my bishop. We check. Uh, and then if king takes rook e7. If he defends with rook e8, uh, I'm just going to take on h4. And king f7, bishop g6 works because he doesn't have the e8 square because my bishop is covering that. If he had king e8, then I would lose the exchange. But uh, king, king f7 now just bishop takes g6. Uh, he has to take my bishop, rook takes here and should be game over. And if rook e8, just king takes h4. No need recalculating what I have already calculated. Yeah, this doesn't work. Uh, I'm sorry for not mentioning this. I I didn't mention that King E6 is checkmate. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's check the game with an engine. I'm not sure I played well, but I I don't think his. Knight c6 was a good idea. d4. Yeah, knight c6. Is d5 really the main move? Okay, I don't know this line. I have to uh, have to admit. How is this better? Why would I want to go into this? Black now has f5. f5. I, I want to be black here. I don't care what the engine says. I love this structure for, for black. So knight c6, d5, bishop g4. I took on d6, which I guess is incorrect. No, still plus one. Bishop takes d6, plus one, bishop e2. Bishop e2 is equal. If he plays queen here, here, knight f6. Bishop g5, I was planning to do something like that. Yeah, I'm a pawn up, but it's equal. He can castle queen side and put pressure on my position. After knight f6, knight c3. Still, he has compensation for the pawn, which is weird. Yeah, bishop b4 is a mistake. Queen d8, rook d8, bishop g5 is correct. Bishop c3, bc3, bishop takes f3. Pawn takes is correct. That was the toughest decision of the game for me. And now apparently I am just winning. Rook d one Knight e8. Now let's see if I had uh, bishop b5. No, I didn't. The engine wants me to take uh, to attack the rook or play bishop e3. I just took on d6. And bishop f4, which was correct. Rook d8. Rook d1. Yeah, it's a big advantage. Yeah, this is this is a winning ending. Okay, so he played correct. I mean, he, he played a slightly unsound variation, which he has compensation for the pawn. I didn't know it. I'm ashamed that I didn't know it. Now I do. 
And I, I still disagree that d5 is the best move because black has that f5 pawn break and I, I want to be black. So I'm going to play this the next time, but I'm going to be better at it. And I'm going to learn the lines after queen e7. Okay, uh, tomorrow I'm playing a game, uh, a training game against the patron in the Moscow variation of the Grunfeld defense, which will be the theoretical video recorded tomorrow. The day after that I'm recording the Neo Grunfeld, so once again if you would like to play me in that variation with either color, head over to Patreon, the link is in the description below, everything is explained there. Uh, thanks very much, uh, I hope you like the game, let me know what you think, and stay tuned for more chess. Bye bye!